gloves are off, the heels are on. It's Let Me Finish with Emmy Award winning sports reporter Susie Schuster and senior West Coast editor of Vanity Fair, Krista Smith. It's not easy to get a word in edgewise, but they'll try. And now, here's Krista and Susie. 105 degrees, 105 degrees here in Hollywood. It is just hot and disgusting, but it's not too hot to break down the world of sports. But That's exactly what we're going to do. How hot is it in Malibu, do. where you are, Susie? Oh, is Krista. it 105 in Malibu? No, it's really not. It's, it's balmy not. and sunny, and everyone's That's got fake shoe. boobs and an ultra tan. So, you know, it, it, it's all good. No, it, you know what? It's probably like 80. Yeah. It's a heat wave in Malibu right now, but... Um, I will say the driving over the canyons, through the hills, over the hills, and through the woods to grandmother's house, it went from 80 to 95 to 105 within three minutes. Yeah. And I was it's so glad my car LA. didn't break down. Yeah, but it, not as hot as it is in Miami. Uh, it, it, it's not as hot as it is in, in, in the whole LeBron camp. Yeah. Because, man, has it changed? Has the ill will poured over LeBron. I mean, All right, well, we'll get to that crazy. a little bit later. Let's talk about what I wanted to talk about right now, which is the ESPYs. Okay. Did you watch? You know, I watched the highlights. Yeah? I did. I, I happened to highlights. watch the ESPYs. It was fantastic. Uh, the why, why did you watch the ESPYs? Because it's where sports and entertainment meet, and that's what right. we do right here, and I wanted to okay. see what the competition You're was the like. You're the senior West Coast editor of Vanity Fair magazine. Do you really believe this is where sports and entertainment collide? Uh, where else am I going to see Brooklyn Decker right. and John Hamm? Where am I going to see <laughs> Mark Wahlberg and Reggie Bush? Mm. Yeah, it was fantastic. Amare and Seth Meyers and was great. At first, I was like, how are they, what are they going to do with Seth Meyers? But he was great. Yeah. It was very funny. It had all the SNL people came on for cameos, mm -hmm. and the the award show actually in the beginning. I thought what they did uh, really well with was all the montage. It was like Hoosiery montage of mm -hmm. everything that happened in sports that year, and with the Olympics, huge year, Olympics, right. World Cup. You don't always get that at the ESPY. So I think it was particularly a good show this year. Samuel Jackson whipped out another Kangol hat always as he there. always does. I mean, yeah. it's like that. that no, your other no, wait, wait, wait. Samuel. Let me finish. Yeah. Samuel Jackson, like literally has to be the biggest jock sniffer I've ever seen of an actor. I mean, that guy is around athletes more he's than a huge whores golfer. in a hotel you know, he's like room. a scratch golfer. Did really? Did you just say whores in a hotel room? Whores rooms? in a hotel room. Oh, my God. Um, Have you ever traveled yeah. with a team? There are whores in the hotel rooms. They hang out I in the bars. It's all wait. good. Did you go to Michael this Vick's? This is all about the ESPYs. Did you go to more Michael Vick's 4th of July party? You know, it's so funny. I was going to go, but my white outfit was at the cleaners. So I, I didn't go. Another party. Michael Vick having another party. Chris and I were talking earlier about uh, the LeBron party down in Miami and how did people get tickets? And I said it's pretty much the same way they got tickets to the Michael Vick party. Either part way, two. I would have liked to have had a ticket to either one of those parties. You could have I'll had a ticket. I'll trade you an Oscar party ticket for one of those parties. How about that? No, I know how hard it is yeah. to get an Oscar ticket. So I've All right, to back to this guy. What's his time. name again, this one here? By the way, before we even get to that. I'm a little tired of him. Will you let me finish? Drew Brees? Yeah. I'm a little over. Uh, Drew Brees. Anyway, go Why ahead. Why you over? Uh, oh, oh no, over you wanted Drew to Brees. talk. I'm just a little over Drew Brees. It was a little too like that was the one thing I have to say. I mean, it was great he won, and then they won again, and Sean Payton got up there and mm -hmm. won again, and I would have rather they'd spread the wealth around a little bit. A lot Why? of Why they Favre. won the Super Bowl? I know. I guess that's just it. Yeah. You just wanted to see more of Brett Favre. You wanted to see John Hamm on no. the same stage. Yeah, Two very good. pretty guys. He looked good, but you know he Who looked prettier, really John Hamm or Brett Favre? No one looked prettier than that. John Hamm. Ham. Yeah. Brooklyn Decker, I think. Brett Favre. Look at that. Now, why does Susie Schuster love Brett Favre so much? Yummy. Yeah? He's just grizzly. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's Wait, nice. is that Brett Favre? Wait, wait, wait go back of, again, by the way, Matt. Let's just Poor check. Rich. Yeah. You, you, you pick a picture of him in mid-sentence with some kind they of presidential thing They look exactly alike. <laughs> at least my ex-husband's Michael Vick. I mean, they look exactly alike. I need you to step out when of the box a little bit. When were you married to the, uh, the dog mauler? Yeah, you know. Back when I didn't care about animals. Right. Look, I think they look, I think basically think? Brett Favre would play Rich Eisen in a movie. Oh, you don't understand. You've made my nice sweet husband's year yeah. and mine, because that means so. maybe. All right, Matt, let's see who else is at the movie. ESPYs. Um, okay. Oh. Now, Susie and I just want you to know we're going to have a smackdown about this. Because a lot, of, a lot of hate on the bad, tacky outfits of everybody at uh, the ESPY Awards and why they can't kind of get it together. And my feeling as is perfectly exampled here is that women at the ESPYs dress for men, okay? So men, Matt, what do you think of these outfits? I like them. Men love these outfits. <laughs> they don't dress for women like the Oscars and all the parties you go to right. in Malibu. The women dress for women. Here they're dressing for men. 
You know, it's look, tits, I, it's I'm ass, all it's leg. for Hervé Leger. I it's really am. Extensions. But you know what it is? It just okay. So the the ESPYs used to be in Vegas, and when they were in Vegas, we all kind of vamped it up because it was Vegas. But, but this, wait, it's the this same is place. LA, not Vegas. Okay, you go to the Oscars every year, and Miss. I have perfect yeah, access, and everyone kisses my ass to get into the best party of the year. Like you go to all the stuff. I've seen what you wear. I've seen what all the people that go to your parties wear. Stylist, may I say, stylist. Yeah. What I'm saying is, okay, Brooklyn Decker. Yes, I get it. Her gazongas are abnormally amazing. <laughs> I get the fact that her body is. Yeah. I mean, it's like hello. Cool. Flawless, flawless. Yeah. I mean, those that that's heavy you lifting. You could cut a turkey on that hip bone right there. Okay, <laughs> who looks like that? And she's not in a you know a Balenciaga just, perfect you know French Vogue outfit. That's but for she's guys. In an SB, right. you know, for ninety percent. Just feel like she audience. looks like she's gonna. Go, and it's like Emmanuel Shariki. Well, I that's love just you. ugly, but you're, you're still a size looks good. zero. She looks like a, she looks like. Matt, is that hot? Mm. Mm. I think it's tough. Yeah. Her boobs look hard. It's just not a good look. I mean, it looks like something out of Forever 21 or maybe a mall store. And like, I don't get it. You get dressed by everybody. Where was your stylist? Did they go on vacation? Are they in Ischia? Like, what happened? I don't know. That's, well, this one I do Now, this love. is a hot mess. Well, you feel a little bit bad for Danica because obviously she's, a, a, if those of you that don't know, a race car driver, right? Always in the seat crunch down helmet mm -hmm. jumpsuit completely covered head to toe in her sponsors and in her nothing no skin show so i get why she wants to show skin and i get why she wants to but do in blue hair. satin it's a little too witchy poo in blue satin the hair is a little too witchy poo for me wasn't you there know? a song from the 70s like blue satin something Isn't or blue other satin big in nascar no i don't think it's big anywhere i think <laughs> you know where it's big in kentucky I'm sorry if you're in Kentucky, but it's just it's just wrong, and it's '80s prom wear. Wait, before we can we just go back to Danica for one second? Here, I think this chick is really great. I okay. think it's kind of uh, hot. What, what look I is she like going she though? Is, is is there a wind tunnel here? I think it's like, just big hair. Happening? It's humid. It's hot. It was 101 degrees yesterday. At it's the big SBs? hair, blue satin. It looks good with a brunette. I don't know. Blue satin sashes. Was that was that yeah. what I'm thinking? Of? I don't know. I'm anyway, not my my whole at point it. is, I just I just back don't understand where all the stylists were. Brooklyn Decker. I mean, my goodness. She's very, I mean, but but see, she isn't a Kardashian. No. She Andy Roddick doesn't win anything. But I'm afraid that the straps in her dress are going to give. I don't I know. I mean, that looks. And and Aaron, yes, you have the sickest body ever on the planet. I get it. I think the dress is really Vegas. I'm not into the extensions curled. I actually liked her better right. when her hair was simpler. I'm Marissa more, I'm Miller. I mean, LeBron at this point. Can I, can I finish? <laughs> Excuse I mean, me. Okay. Go I, ahead. This is very important stuff. Marissa Miller is perfection. She's annoying. I see her in Malibu. She mm, is so, Malibu. she's so thin. It's like, it's painful to look at. Of course, I'm so jealous. I used to say, are you angry or jealous? Oh no, I'm so yeah. jealous. But I like to be like, ah, she's too thin. Are you kidding? All right, we're done. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone's relief. It's okay. To everyone's Matt, relief. Matt, you can take it off. No. Let's, go, let's go Amari. Oh, it's great. He looks Hollywood. hundred million. I like it. He One looks of the best very... things, Seth Meyers did have this whole stint when he's talking about it, and he's like talking about all the money made with free agency, and he said, but regardless of how much money you all have made, it doesn't compare to what Elon Nordigan got in free agency this summer. Well, I mean, funny. she is the free agent very of the year. Funny. Back to Amari's outfit. I like the look. Very New York. Very, Speaking if I can Vegas, make it there, I'll make it anywhere. He looks okay. great. Okay. Anybody else? Derek, Derek and his wife. your buddy. Okay, Derek, I would have gone dark at night, and I and I love you. I think you're a great it's guy. It's 100 but degrees. I thought he looked good. Sweetheart, it's an, it's an it's an award show. What, what what about Chris Bosh? Is all in white. Look at that. That's, a, that's seven foot four of white. Yeah, it looks that, like a that's glacier. Mike, that's looks Mike like Vick. a glacier. And he also cut all his hair okay. off. Which I'm, and he's, is he with Little Kim? I don't know, but that's not Little Kim. <laughs> I mean, is that a flat? Is that a gladiator or a heel? That it's, sandal. It's, it's a hot mess, is what it is. That's a hot oh, mess. Oh, picking on Lisa Leslie. That's like clubbing a seal. Okay. It's a hot mess. What about this hot mess? Okay, guys. This is the U.S. soccer team, by the way, that got like a, I think, a Landon gave Donovan, these crazy uh, awards, but I think it got a sports achievement of the year. Yeah. Here, here's how I feel about this. You either go all ties or no ties at all, but you got to be uniform. You're a team. They have enough hair gel in there for most of Staten Island and the cast of, you know, Snooky or whatever those people are. Right, but it's great news, but it's the Jersey Shore, but it's great news for Landon. He's got cause for celebration because he did not father yeah, that hey, child. Hey, no love child. So Good job. no love child Woo. for, uh, for um, him. Now, Blue satin. That's, it's the prom. Oh, that's a little mother of the bride on, uh, on Lindsay Vaughn. But, you know, 
She's a skier. We don't know. You talk about your East German muscles. Can you imagine what that must be it's not like? Good. She's a downhill racer. Yeah, but here's the deal. That's face Put is on beautiful. something sexy and black, like Versace. -ish. Wait, Matt, how Where do we get back on this? I'm waiting for LeBron. I can't take it anymore. My head's going to explode. Next. Oh, finally. Oh, damn finally. it. Finally. All right. Dream team. Is that all you had? You don't Dream want to talk any more about? Excuse me. Excuse me, you're done? No more Brett Favre coming out? No more ankle talk? And he talks about it. it's all about the ankle. All about the ankle, about coming back. He announced that at the ESPYs. It was a big deal. Don't oh, he care. is coming back. Did he announce that? He, he said it basically just depends on what is his ankle Is he going to have his own like. special, do you think, on ESPN? With oh Rich? Oh, my God. He so won't. I mean, on NFL Network? Yeah. No, he so won't. Oh, right. I will Rich say this. NFL Network, can't we get the exclusive with Rich and, and Favre? Well, he, Rich does love Farf. Yeah. He thinks he's a great guy. Uh, so so we'll that see. means he's coming back. I mm -hmm. did like seeing Tim Tebow. I did like seeing Mark Sanchez. Tim Tebow, All of course, the, they friends. used our joke, which seems to be a late motif in the entire SBs, that they used our jokes for, for most of their shows, saying the Tim Tebow in the jersey. Yeah, we get it. We thought of it here first. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, Tim Tebow, Reggie Bush, all these big NFL guys in, in place sitting there. And mm -hmm. It was easy for What's them. What's not nice? To, why, I mean, why wouldn't you tune in for that? See, I like to see that. I like to see Mark Sanchez out of his Jets uniform. Mm -hmm. I like to see Reggie Bush. You like, to see, you like to see Mark Sanchez out of his Jets uniform, period. I, I would like to see it anyway. You like Mark right. Sanchez. Yeah, I right. do like him. Um, all right, Still Susie. Joke. They did. Which one? All right. Oh, oh my God! Well, that's yeah, we coming have up. Clip. I mean, they, it's part of that late motif. That's my big Ivy League word of the day. It's just that it's the revolving thing that we're going to see right. throughout the show. They just keep ripping us off, but who does it? So, what do you think anyway. about this, Susie? Do you have any comments on LeBron? Yeah, I have so many comments. I mean, I just think this. I was thrilled that we were able to do so much show around yep. it. And what did I say beforehand? I was like, oh, I don't like the idea of it. It was fun to watch, but mm -hmm. I hated the idea of it. I said, this is going to be a game mm -hmm. changer for this guy. And the ill will, the ill will that is poured out for LeBron but James is But they're not showing the goodwill. This All guy, they're showing let me finish. Let me finish. This guy hasn't raped anybody. This guy has not taken illegal drugs. This guy has not um, poured oil into the Gulf of Mexico. What he has done is chosen to switch teams. But it was the way he did it. It's what I said in our pregame show last week. Make the calls. Be a gentleman. Be true to your hometown. Do whatever you want. And, and my favorite thing later, we'll talk more about that whole idea of being true but to your hometown. But didn't everybody know he Krista, was going? Did this everybody decision know? was gross. I, I mean, I think he gave, I still stand by it. It's entertainment. It had the largest ratings for ESPN that was non-NFL related. It was huge. Mm. So from a money standpoint and from an awareness standpoint, every, you've got everybody talking about Cleveland. No one was talking about Cleveland before. Suddenly everyone's like, oh, Cleveland, I bet you more people will tune into what happens to Cleveland for a second. I bet they will. ESPN, it's huge. And from what I gather from the intel on your camp, right. everybody knew he was going to Miami. It's everybody not like a big knew. secret. It wasn't like, oh my God, we're, you know, he went through the motions. He met with everybody, but he was there for seven years. But what I love is the fallout now. So, you know, but Chris Bosch, we all knew he was going to Wayne Way. We thought right. we'd, he'd, we'd resign down here. You said it six months ago he was going to Miami. Right. I but I am omniscient. I thought he'd stay in Cleveland. Right. That's true. And you were wrong, but that's all good. Well, Anyway, it's, it's okay. Tell me but about what I love is got. the fallout. Dan Gilbert writes the letter. He gets fined a hundred thousand dollars, by the way, by the commissioner of the NBA I think he should, for actually. writing I this letter. I was not happy about that letter. I thought that was a little disgusting. Cheesy, sour grapes, bad letter, bad owner, bad way to lead, bad way to show your why your not take city. ownership of LeBron in a way that, like, he was here for seven years. He created this great program. Now he goes on. We're, we we loved having him here. While we're He's so disappointed, back time. while we're, we're so disappointed exactly, that, that you've left, just like we appreciate the time you've given us. That was as bad as the Dutch, you know, fouls on the World Cup final for me. I mean, you I just think can't, that level you, you of just sportsmanship. Can't wait to get but to I think it to does soccer. cross. Let me finish. I do think sportsmanship goes goes across the board, right. and I think that even though it's written and it's all capped and it comes from the owner. I do think it is the same bad sportsmanship as it is as the you know bad fouls and kicking someone or you know it, it's like you have to own it and I just think that was disgusting. Yeah, we'll make that comparison later in the show now that I think about it because we're going to talk about the passing of George Steinbrenner in a bit and it's so interesting to see the different ways owners can relate to their fans because as crazy as George Steinbrenner was and as tyrannical as an owner as he was. He would never have done something like this. He would have. He just. He just had better smarts. He had better PR about himself. This just sounded like Sarah Grapes 
pissy guy trying to make himself look like a big guy to the people of Cleveland. Now and think about how many people, works. how many people are going to go to those games to watch the three amigos play, and yeah. you know, like, how, like what it does for for basketball. And let's see if they win a championship. We don't know that they will. We don't know how the chemistry is going to be. I mean, it could take years. It could not happen at all. And here they are taking down one of the billboards yeah, of LeBron. I mean, that's a that's great a shot. Picture, actually, it's a great shot. I love the fact that LeBron <laughs> now has become basically the gut of, you know, the butt of every joke, the excuse, the out, whatever it is. It's Sarah all about Le is blaming a LeBron. LeBron James is not a quitter. He just moved to a different but, team. But he's the new Sarah Palin. So we'll see if maybe his daughter then marries the guy that she oh, got knocked up with hope. looking for a reality show. But that's neither here nor there. So Can we get them all? LeBron. Okay. Right? They're going to be on everything, we could get them Levi here, right? and we could Bristol. You know Bristol was named show. for Bristol, you know, where ESPN is, right? That's she beautiful. was named for the town. That's I've great. been to Bristol. You don't want to go to Bristol. It's I bad. think you might want to go to Bristol. She's cute. Um, hey now, Carmelo's Dirty wedding. Girl. Were yeah. you there? Um, I was and I was in Malibu. Mm. But Carmelo, um, he didn't he, didn't he marry Lala Vasquez, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the girl from MTV she I've never seen before, Range but I know Rover. her name. They go to our preschool. <laughs> <coughs> Are you serious? Yeah. She drives a custom pink Range Rover. That's so weird. They had a, they had a kid before they got married. That's hot. weird. Yeah, it's weird. weird. Uh, so Carmelo looking, um, sorry, LeBron looking very tonal in right. grays. Um, very tonal in New York City, going to 42nd Street Chipriani. But they, and but he gets booed like crazy. Don't forget, LeBron started but he wearing the, he's gonna he started get booed. wearing he's gonna, the Yankees he got booed hat before he was. Can I let I finish? He started wearing the Yankees hat before he he wasn't even a Yankee fan, like a poser Yankee fan. You live in Cleveland, you can't with a tribe there. You can't wear. It's ridiculous. You can't wear a Yankees fan. What if you about live your tribe? husband Tom Brady that was wearing a Yankees a cap and he's that was in the so bad. That was what about so that? bad. I mean, you're gonna look. I mean, come on. I called up Tom That's and I said, Tom, Tom you take that off right now. Okay. No, I didn't. But yeah. so he got booed like crazy. Yeah, but then he gets your, booed everywhere he, got he goes. Booed at the ESPYS when, he, when you know when his name was mentioned. He got I think booed it at the ESPYS. A sport. Do we have this? What do we have next? Do we have the shot of a? Uh, there, you know, there, there's several good stories coming out of this. There's a guy in Michigan who got pulled over for a DUI. Mm -hmm. He blamed being drunk on LeBron James leaving Love it. for Love it. Miami. He said that he was so disappointed that LeBron didn't go to the Celtics, wrong team, that he had to go out and get inebriated and then get behind the wheel of some gigantic truck that people in Michigan drive, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, it does. What about your buddy Charles Barkley? What did he have to say about it? Can I tell you about that later? Oh, That's okay, my favorite sorry. thing. That's sorry. my very favorite thing. And I'm sorry. God. I it for you. All uh, right. Wait, well, wait, but. What about the woman with the LeBron pendant? Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. This Thanks is a great story. It is great. So a woman fan bought for five bucks a jeweled pendant number 23 so says the king. we believe she bought a jeweled pendant for five bucks you in don't a believe garage her? sale. Come on. This it's so worth like ten thousand dollars. It's so bullshit, right? It's so bullshit. Basically, eBay selling a one of a kind LeBron James uh, pendant, which is just a little like stick pin with his number on it and but ruby rubies and diamonds. and diamonds. And she gets an email back saying, "Please, LeBron James is over here at this address. He'll buy it for any price. It's whatever. his. It's his. But she's going to raise money to open her own gym. I know. It's kind of a little. I, I don't know. It's, it's a little iffy. It smells a little iffy all the way around it. It's Cleveland. It's stinky. So, yeah. but here's the best part. They get there, and it's his, oh. it's his marketing company's manager's pin. The mother, the mother, and he lives with his mother. By okay. the way, how about that? The head of LeBron's marketing company that has one client besides LeBron, and it's apparently a huge money pit, he lives with his mother. What does that mean? Like, you're the head of LeBron James's marketing company, and you live with your mother? The mother says, come on over. LeBron's yeah. not there. The woman gets there, they back up trucks all around her so she cannot leave, and then they threaten her. Well, I'm surprised. I thought it would like, be like this thing. crazy. But now they think she, well, the real story is, is that it was stolen. Right. So suddenly it appears again. So you understand why they're going after it. But I do <laughs> think it's kind of funny. I kind of believe her story that she might have bought it, or I want to believe that she bought it for $5. But they're like the Mel Gibson of Cleveland. They're having tirades. <gasps> I mean. The Mel Gibson story. So good. Did you see in the news today? Not for a non sequitur, but now that they're saying that the that it was fake. Yeah. The mouth was fake. She didn't really. She didn't get hit. That Did it you see the picture like of the teeth? Inflicted. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's she's for claiming that Mel show. broke her teeth. That's but gonna those, be our other special. But um, the, the, I will say that those audio tapes. Eesh. Yeah. Yeah.
scary. It's hard, yeah. Let's not cover it. Anyway, that, LeBron yeah. and Palooza, it's just ugly and it's crazy and it's not going but to I go think away it's anytime great. soon. It's selling magazines, people are watching television, it's helping us get out of a recession. <laughs> Real estate's going to go up in Miami. Cleveland's already, I mean, what, what, uh, nothing was happening in Cleveland right, here nor so there. Status Real quo. estate's going up in Miami. Ticket sales are going to be huge everywhere to see these guys go. I mean, it's fun. Udonis Haslam signed, I know how important he is to you. Right. Exactly. Junior Silgauskas, yeah. the former Cleve, he, he's a, down it's there. It's great. It's great visual. It's something fun to talk about. The good news is that Derek Fisher did decide to stay yeah, in, of course, in Los Angeles. And and that's the good news for the Lakers, of course, because I think Kobe Bryant would have single handedly killed him had he gone to Miami. But uh, yeah, he's I'm, not going to go to Miami. But no. it makes it interesting. It makes it fun. And, and Denver, I don't know what happens. The Nuggets, uh, you know, Carmella, let's, let's hope that they, uh, they can do something. They're in the toilet. I know. It's rough. Well, let's move on to okay. the, the just, I mean, Krista basically w almost broke down in tears not starting with the World Cup today because y you all know how seriously she takes her football. But somehow the World Cup that happens every four years was not as important as the ESPYs or as important as LeBron Palooza. But I would love, okay. if any of you okay. think World Cup should have started the show, I'm dying to know because I just, I, we, we you know we went back and forth over this, but I just, Casillas, it happens Sunday, it's over. Guy. Casillas, the goalie's the captain, it's his third World Cup performance. Did you see him? He was bawling. He kissed his when girlfriend scored, in the middle of an interview. When they scored the goal, the pressure that he was under, and he, by the way, won them that game. Right. Okay, won them that game. Like, in a, as a goalie, and you were either a zero or a hero, and that guy won that game for them, and it just, it was just heartbreaking and the Dutch were despicable the, the the fact that they should have had two red cards if you actually looked at the replay two red mm -hmm. cards absolutely hands down and this guy scores the goal what does he do he he doesn't you know egomaniac dive slide he he takes off his shirt to talk about their team member that had died and Miss Ivy League will translate it for you for those that don't read Spanish backwards anyway <laughs> Danny you are always with us it, it just was a beautiful moment, right. and it, it was, was a really beautiful nice. moment for Spain, and, and unfortunately the Dutch, it's all sour grapes, it makes you hate them, and I kind of love them, orange is my favorite color, I want to love them, but they, <laughs> you know, the, the goalie takes off, like they go up to meet them, they're pouting, they're bitter, and I understand yeah, they were it, pissy. three years of charm, but to blame it on refing, and you're like, refing, all of us looked at the tapes, A, he wasn't on side, and B, your fouls, you should have been, you should have been playing with eight men. And the fact that the coach, uh, this big ceremonial procedure, I'm, I know you didn't see it, uh, but walking up and getting the medal and meeting everybody, you're in South Africa, you're in the stadium, and the coach, as soon as he walks past, on camera, takes his medal off. Once again, By the way, you know me so well. I did watch that. I saw that exact moment. Yeah. I, and I thought to myself, that was despicable. That's as bad as that coach that was writing awful. that letter. And that's what I mean. It's like the bad sportsmanship is disgusting. And the Spanish, you, you're thr I'm thrilled for them. And they were the better team. They mm -hmm. were the better team. Well, all those guys play together. We made that point, I think, last yeah. week. On Real Madrid and Barcelona, mm -hmm. these guys all play together. It's not like they're all, they're all disparate they're still, like the rest of the teams. They've all played together four years ago before. Right. They just, it all happened and they were beautiful game. It was an ugly game. The, the Uruguay-Germany game was a much better game in terms of entertainment value to watch, but it, it, it was an ugly matchup. It wasn't pretty soccer, mm -hmm. but the, the right team won. I'm thrilled. And, and, and it got know, huge ratings. People actually really watched up it. Up 41% from four years ago. 41%. That's just crazy. I think they said 15 million people mm -hmm. were tuned in, in the U.S. And it'll be in Brazil, and yeah. that'll be a lot of fun as well. Right. And I'm going to have to Find a way to go. Seasonal depression. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. It is. It's hard. My, my two-year-old went woke up and asked me to watch World Cup at six in the morning. He was over at the house. He said, "World Cup." Which I we played was really cute. in the backyard. Yeah. yeah. But then you see him with all the sequins on, and then you get really bummed out when you see him in real life. Yeah. The Ed Hardy has got to go. Yeah. I it's think it should Ed be Hardy's never a good look. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing is that just pro there's, just there's a that. lot of disappointed there's Dutchmen. <laughs> A lot of guys that aren't going to get a blowjob. A lot of guys in I like a lot of guys cross, in the Netherlands though. with their hands yeah. with, with their uh, pants around their ankles, waiting for their BJ's that Bobby Eden had <laughs> promised to yeah. her thirty-three thousand followers. I know. Guess what? And she sadly is going to have to gotta uh, win a game. Gotta yeah. win a game. She looks like Tinsley Mortimer. Do you think? Well, that she just has that everyday blonde kind of look. She looks like every girl in Hollywood. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Basically, if you walk outside and her studio and make a left, like. there's five a of those. I guess what she doesn't look like a Kardashian. No. That's all. There's no, nothing Kardashian about her. Let's just do the fastest baseball segment in the history yes. of all kind. Um, Big Poppy wins the Great. home run derby. Awesome. Yay. We love these. I'm a Red Sox fan. I'm from New England originally. So yay. We're happy with Big Poppy. The NL wins. 
for the first time in gazillion years, a big deal. Which uh, means uh, home field advantage, right? That's right, for the, for the World, World Series. Series. I, you know, and I'm sure Joe Girardi like, you know, was a little devastated because it was his first time coaching a, a, an all-star mm -hmm. appearance. But you know, what can you do? Hey, what can you do, as they'd say in the Bronx? Hey, what can you do? That's but uh, yeah, so there's our quick baseball. We will but actually wait, get to baseball the one day of these that days. happened. This gentleman. This is so dies. sad. It, it is true. It figures that George, Strein, George Steinbrenner would pick the morning of the All Star game to pass away. The beloved owner of the Yankees, beloved by some, but also hated kind by of many. A beast, right? He apparently was the meanest Rich son of mean. a bitch to work for in the history of all bosses. But he is single. Would you have worked for him? I would have loved to have worked for him. I love that kind of personality. Susie that would have done so mean. well by me. I like rich and mean. <laughs> the meaner, the richer, the better for Susie. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Honestly, like, I, because you know why? Especially out here, everyone thinks they have to be best friends with everybody they work with. Like, hey, we'll be friends with them. You're there for a job. Like, do your job and go home. And I would have liked working for the boss. He probably would have fired me and hired me like Billy Martin. Mm -hmm. It would have been great. Did you ever, there's a great press conference. I don't know if you've ever seen mm -hmm. it, where he basically announces the hiring of Billy Martin and fires him before the press conference is over. It's just right. the greatest thing That's ever. Right. But I, I was really sad, and I did think it was amazing and fitting that he would pass away the morning of the All-Star game. All the attention, of course, went to the boss. Derek Jeter wore, and, mm -hmm. and all the Yankees wore mm -hmm. pins in, in commemoration of him, and it was very sad. I well, know he's, he's at least a little bit more entertaining me, rest in peace, than what's going on with the Dodgers right now. And the, it's like a team is going to get split up via divorce. Yeah. So it, 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 you do kind of long for those days of tyrannical rule, which I don't know how much how many more we've got coming down the pike. We don't have that many more. I mean, Jerry Buss is the closest thing, mm -hmm. I think, to uh, George Steinbrenner. And, and boy, that McCourt situation, mm -hmm. ugly. They're saying now that they may have to sell the team to come up with finances to pay off each other because they only have 17,000 houses. Why don't mm -hmm. they sell some houses? Don't they have a house in Malibu? Maybe you could buy their house. They have two. Well, He bought Courtney Cox's house for $40 million. Wow. And then he bought the house next to it just because he could. Right. For his kids. Right. Because right. that's normal. Yeah. You know, the other side, the other aside, and this is to all of you inside baseball people, but Bob Shepard, the legendary voice of the Yankees, passed away too. He passed away this week. And it was actually so nice at the All-Star Game because they actually used his voice to introduce Derek Jeter. And he had this very beautiful, lilting, mm -hmm. I heard it. old, I mean, he's one of the all-time mm -hmm. great announcers and so anybody that loves baseball you'd hear his voice you'd know immediately where you were you were in the house that Ruth built and it was just really special so two big big baseball names passing mm -hmm. away this week all right here's a segue from two uh, heroes of baseball to Charles Barkley I mean how much smoother can you get from that things we love I love Sir Charles because he came out and he absolutely blasted LeBron for this decision. He hated the whole idea of it. He said, thank God I was in Canada. I didn't have to watch it. But he said, this was so unclassy. Did he should have Canadian TV? I, you know, I know that Canada has ESPN, but whatever bar Charles was in or right. whatever yeah, gambling didn't casino have didn't have it on at the time. <laughs> but, you know, and... and I, I love Charles as a friend. I also love him as a broadcaster, and I love the fact that he always says what's on his mind. He's not afraid to ruffle feathers, and I so appreciate that because, let's face it, there's so much ass-kissing in the sports world, and so many people who are broadcasting are so worried about playing a round of golf with whichever athlete that they're talking about that they never say what truly happens, and Charles really does, and I love it. He said, it was not class. He said, look, Dan Gilbert was no better, but he was like, you know what, just shut up and play ball, and I so love that about him. There you go. Okay. I'm not angry at that. Don't be angry. I like Charles Barkley. All right, Matt, do you have my favorite thing? Let's see if you can guess what it is. But it is great to be here at the ESPYs in Los Angeles. This is where sports and entertainment come together. It's like a Kardashian sister's bedroom. That's just so, I look like at Reggie's like, look at my husband, Matt. You got both of you guys. Look at that. Yeah, that, that's a cold joke. Oh, it was so good. Reggie said it was so good. Damn. Yeah, that was a good joke. That was written, It was a great joke. And then, the, uh, Matt, you have my other photo. This is Kim's new boyfriend, which uh, bodes really well for the Dallas Cowboys this year. Uh, he is uh, Miles Austin, the receiver, who came out uh, playing gangbusters uh, last season. Mm -hmm. And now look at him. He's dating her. I think uh, Tony Romo. You got a lucky rabbit's foot there. Did we even talk about the decision the Steve Carell of Paul Rudd? Mm -hmm. No. Uh -uh. Let's, let's, before, before we go, can we just point something out, people? 
You know, we work really hard on this show. It's just the, the two of us and Sasha. And we really are sitting here struggling to try to come up with a good show for you it's every a step week. step above and, Wayne's world. Yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> Easy. So, uh, you, you know, we try to think of original ideas in comedy. It just comes from us. It's yeah. just a triumvirate. Just us. No writers. So amazing to me when we saw yep. this clip that looks so familiar. Roll it, Matt. I've decided. I'll do it again This is tough. I have decided I am going to take my appetite to the Outback Steakhouse. You will be eating dinner at the Outback Steakhouse. That is correct. And how do you explain that to the staff and management at Chili's? What a good run with Chili's. And in a perfect world, I would be eating at Chili's constantly. But tonight, there's no rules. Just right. Outback Steakhouse. You know what's not right? You know, Paul read another dear friend, like, Paul, call me up and say, can I borrow your bit? It was really funny because Seems to me that we had that bit last week, the day of the decision. Matt, can we see the originality Roll that unfolded clap. here at the Room Live? So, so Rich, I, Rich, yeah. what did you have for dinner this evening? Well, I haven't had it yet, uh, Krista. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> I haven't had it yet, so uh, it's sort of like you know uh, I, I, I'm I'm going to have a sign and trade um, with uh, the Cobb salad. Uh, wow. And, uh, wow! That's what I'm going to have for dinner. I'm going to have Cobb salad. Um, Rich, and Rich, some if, you, if you'd stayed in. home though, Rich. <laughs> yeah, here I am yelling at my poor husband. Um, again, like the originality. Mm. It was here in the room live, people. So if you want to see breaking breaking cutting edge comedy. Yeah. You just come here first to the room live and we'll give it to you on Let Me Finish. Thank you very much. That's it for today. Yeah, we'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching and stay cool this weekend. Take yeah. care.